Hello viewers, my name is Adam. And I'm Aaron. And this is Sticky Media Productions, bring you a movie review. Well, we finally watched it. It came out, and we watched it. And what we're talking about is Zack Snyder's Justice League. You got your wish! It's out! It's Y'all willed it into existence. Uh, enjoy. That being said, we will be reviewing this movie by as its own thing exactly as if it was only as if this was as it was attended exactly we did not review the 2017 version of justice league back in the day because at the time everybody said their piece exactly there's no, no more words need to be said on that and wow this was a lot of movie four hours <laughs> four hours worth of content that was supposed to sum it was supposed to be the sum up to his predecessors before it. And what I mean, the predecessors, the movies that Zack Snyder has made in continuation with this. And, um, I want to say this right off the bat. Uh, Zack Snyder, uh, your, whoever, how you want to view him as a filmmaker, he has a very distinct vision. Exactly. And it is very prevalent and through all of his films he have done. And mm. when he was brought on to do the DC um, prior uh, movies back with Man of Steel and then Batman v Superman. The one thing you can't deny is that Snyder not is very clear on what he wants to see. Exactly. That being said, even during production, and with this being a whole, uh, like a combination of a franchise, there are some very very continuity issues going off the bat. There, there are decisions made in this film that, in our opinion should have been addressed by the other, you know, directors who was touching on the films later on after its production mm -hmm. that clearly shows a disconnect between visions. And we're not going to even discuss the behind the scenes problems with why the Zack Snyder was kicked off originally from the Just League. And from right off the bat, if you were to if you if Zack Snyder were to just completely just show this his version um, back in 2017, and then you see a year later with Aquaman. Mm -hmm. There's a good, there's a clear disconnect between visions right there. Because the mm -hmm. yep. James Wan clearly did his version of how introducing his version of Aquaman, and then Zack Snyder shows his variation <laughs> on how the Aquaman mythos is done in Justice League. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just go right in, going into it. Uh, the story. Um, it's, it's, it's essentially even for the, for the continuity issues. It's still the same version. It is of what happened in 2017. Just longer. Exactly. I, and is it a clear vision? Is it, it? Do you understand what he was trying to lay out? You do. It is. It, it, you know, uh, thematically, it it works as it, it, in the same sense that you understand from start to finish what is going on and what um, is the the main draw for this storyline to continue on. Be that as it may, I still don't like it. This movie is still about. Uh, mother boxes and uh, pull towards the, the apocalypse and dark side and apocalyptians. And that's all. That's all. In, and, and the and the joining and the supposedly joining together of the leaguers uh, to fight this threat. That is basically the whole story right then and there. There is that it's cut and dry. That's simple. That's what mm -hmm. the story is. And but I mean, other than that, it's so it, it's dry. I don't feel as though this movie needed to have been four hours just to tell that simple story. Oh. Um, this is a Justice League movie, i.e., this is a team up superhero film. Mm -hmm. um, the only other uh, fran uh, uh, franchise that he can stand up against, or at least you know, compare it to, is that of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And in that one, we've already had multiple team up movies with multiple Avengers uh, outings. This movie is too early. The, the storyline for which it's trying to evolve, which is a, with, with Apocalypse, the dark side, the side, and, 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 and Steppenwolf, it's too early for these characters to even show up and to be together on. We, this is literally supposed to be coming back, right? Uh, you know, following the, the coattails of Batman v Superman, a movie in and itself was too early to have been made. Mm -hmm. And from what, from what we got is still a story that, like, it's... It's it's taking a lot of faith in this audience mm -hmm. to be going along with whatever story they wanted to tell, based on Zack Snyder's vision. And his vision is just bleak and dark and nihilistic. It's no hope 
And I feel so that is the heart of any DC Comics character going forward, is that there is a sense of hope. It's literally DC throwing darts on a wall to see what sticks. And, you know, let's, let's try to tackle some of those darts by looking at the characters that were introduced to this film, which is probably the better idea to understand where we come from on this. Starting, of course, with Batman. Now, we, from previous videos, we kind of stress on the fact that we're, like, we don't, we, lo we love Batman, mm -hmm. like everybody else, but Batman is kind of like a oversaturated character. On There's the so DC. much content out there for him, it's, un it's, it's unreal. Yeah. So, it was actually a bit of a surprise, and actually refreshing, even what problems that we were having with this movie, that this one still uh, do feel like an ensemble piece. Mm -hmm. It's like he's not no, so much the focus as he was in other outings. In this one, he is just a part of the team. Mm -hmm. I've, I've said it before, I'm not, I was not a fan of Ben Affleck taking on the character of Batman. He does not fit the role of Bruce Wayne or or uh, Batman well enough for me. This version of Batman and Bruce slash Bruce Wayne um, events take place prior to where Zack Snyder wanted to tell his story. Or off screen. So, that, like, show don't tell is always the important way to go when it comes to cinematic storytelling. Um, Wonder Woman. So, Zack Snyder, even, like, he introduced her back in Batman v Superman very rushed, like, it was Bible. rushed, but she was actually one of the more, you know, she was one of the more refreshing aspects of that film. I liked her. And uh, she, luckily enough, she was able to have her solo outing before the 2017 version of Justice League. Exactly. So we had a good understanding of what um, Gal Gadot's Gal, uh, Diana Prince slash Wonder Woman was all about. Mm -hmm. And very much she is that same character, um, just set in the present day, Aquaman or Arthur Curry. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said about continuity issues. On they, they, this was like they add some aspects in into the, the the Aquaman mythos in this movie, which I feel as though were interesting aspects to add into it. But because of the mere fact this is not that they were not introduced in the other uh, outings that he was introduced in, it kind of makes it weird. It feels yeah. um, incoherent. Um, uh, I feel as though the one carry over. From Zack Snyder's version of uh, um, Arthur Curry and James Wan's Arthur Curry is that is Jason Momoa. They are the same, uh, same actor, the mm -hmm. same personality, the exactly. same characterization. But his history and some of the events that happen that they reference in both movies is like there's some. It's kind of muddled. It's muddled because we don't know what type of a version of Justice League now that we should follow with this character. We have Barry Allen, who is not known as a Flash yet. Exactly, and I feel as though it's still fair to not actually even associate him with that uh, with that moniker yet in this film, too. I feel as though he, this is still a character that needs to grow into his hero, and seeing him in this particular one, and, and, and seeing the actual additional scenes they made with him, I understand now why he was chosen to play this role. I yeah, actually... Ezra Miller's yeah, he is a refreshingly new take on the character of Barry Allen. Mm -hmm. um, he, like usually, like uh, usually Barry Allen or any type of Flash character, he is used as the more comic relief, and it does work on in this film. A lot of the jokes he he uses in this kind of lens, or it's just his mannerisms and the way he carries himself in this film. I I, I did like it in the first. It, 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 I, I, at first, I didn't particularly care for it, but now actually having enough scenes to finally uh, uh, to, to breathe, yeah, yeah, to breathe. This character is allowed to breathe and actually, you know, uh, get, you get used to him. Mm -hmm. I like him. Yes, especially the way how they introduce his um, his power set. Yes. yes, where I actually had a kind of a, 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 a better understanding of the Speed Force as a, as he as he manipulates it or how it manipulates him. Another character who uh, was introduced in Just Lee mm. is the character of Victor Stone slash Cyborg. I liked it. Yes. I actually this is probably this is probably one of the very first times where I actually they they succeeded in you know making him feel as though he was he deserves to be on the Justice League as if he was really one of the most powerful people on this league. Like he's, he deserves to be here. Yes, yeah, Cyborg's storyline is one of the most solid aspects to um, Zack Snyder's Just League, and it is also unfortunate of one of the clear reasons why <laughs> Zack Snyder's Just League even exists mm -hmm. without any getting into more details. But the way that um, his relationship with his father, um, his his own power set, and as well as the, introdu the fully introduction of Star Labs 
is oh, something that's yeah, very that was really cool. well done here. Mm -hmm. uh, going from him, uh, you got the character of Superman. Yeah. I feel as though this is probably one of the clear um, understandings is that Zack Snyder does not does not get this character. No, he's very much a visual storyteller, but he's very much only cares about the visuals of all, most of the characters that yeah. he tends to do. Mm -hmm. He has no understanding as to the hope and the aspirations that that character brings to the storyline, and it needs to be shown. It needs to be here. It needs to be illustrated. It needs to be there for the audience to grip onto. And I feel it. And because he's he's only introduced so late into the film, you don't get enough time with him. No. And, and, and you you need it. And it's still from a case like this. Zack Snyder handled the character for three films, mm -hmm. and we still have no idea who Clark Kent, Kal El, or Superman is as a character on itself because so often not uh, in all three films is only what other characters think of him. And other aspects as far as character is concerned of which he was actually clearly just doesn't care about at all and only the visuals is the Apocalypians. I Apocalypians, my bad. was so disappointed. Yeah. He made Dark Side look like a chump and I'm sorry you just don't do that to one of DC Comics most terrifying and most powerful villains that they have. Darkseid is a character to be feared and a character to admire and they it's like, there was no reason why they didn't do really jack squat with him at all in this film. No. And I don't even want to talk about Steph Wolf because he yet again that character it's like there was no reason for him to be in this film. Now mind you they did only introduce Darkseid in this movie mm -hmm. but the way they introduced him they right off the bat you show him like being <laughs> being handled very poorly, and him being weak amongst other god characters. The same type of weird. attention that was given to Thanos in the Marvel in the Marvel movie should have been given to Dark Side here, and it just was not done. And it, I feel as though it, it's very damaging, even more so because of how the production went, uh, how you rendered these characters. Exactly. Yeah, this was so the CGI in this was so noticeable. At least for the, for those particular characters that actually needed uh, that had to utilize a lot of CGI. Cyborg was okay, but yet again, I could still no I still noticed it, and it still felt weird. But it was even more weird for characters like Stephen Wolf, Desaad, and Darkseid. These characters needed right. needlessly. See, uh, there was needlessly done with fully CGI aspects where it could have easily been. Uh, Some prosthetic uh, work could have been done. A good mixture of prosthetics or practical applications that at least fill a uh, make sure that you are feeling that though they're. They the physically in live the, in, this in this space. space. And so, especially through a cinematic lens. Now, the cinematography, Zack Snyder, he's usually known to be have his very artistic eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it works for certain scenes. Like, I, I did enjoy the whole the screen felt around the world. That was cool. Yeah, um, it was very operatic. Yeah, to uh, it. the whole sequence with Barry and uh, um, running and utilizing his powers and speed force was really well done. It was actually very beautiful to, to and, witness. And some of the aspects with um, Cyborg as well. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> like, unfortunately, we're going back to how we feel about how Zack Snyder's nihilistic take on the DC universe. Mm -hmm. This is just through a very dark um, blackish uh, filter throughout. And let's like, talk about that one for and, a hot second. It's not to say that I don't like dark storytelling. I enjoy dark storytelling, but there is a time and there is a place and there is a, a, a room for it to be told. Every, but every storyline within a is at least in the superhero genre shouldn't be all dark and gloom at least not for every character going in it uh, especially not also for a movie that's supposed to be talking about joining together and being and, and working together as one but that being as it may how we feel about the tone at least one of the things that we want like you one thing you shouldn't do is that the 2017 version did was how they handled the tone, and that was with the music. Oh yeah, thank you. thank God they decided to bring back the themes they made throughout the series because they desperately needed them here, and it worked. It felt more. It felt like it was it was it was joined together. Like it, yes. Uh, it, I loved it, and it, it, not, not just that. They actually kind of built upon it in certain aspects, like spe uh, especially with um, Diana's slash Wonder Woman's and the Amazon uh, Amazonian um, themes. I they actually added something into it that I thought 
was missing from yes. the image uh, from her theme song, and it, it works here. Yes, and they also every time they, uh, Superman is even mentioned or the Superman character is mm. brought in, they were able to bring back Hans Zimmer's um, score for mm. Man of Steel on very yeah. various occasions, but. Um, Tom Tom Hulkenberg or Junkie XL sometimes is referred to. He does a good job of basically making sure at least um, Zack Snyder's uh, vision at least sounds aesthetic and uh, thematically um, coherent. Look at it as a whole, and you, and, and you break it down, and you actually see um, where it fits um, on the scale. It falls as just being an okay film. This is his. You know, Magnum Opus from what he's from the groundwork he's laid out so and far. And it's like and, unfortunately and, enough, we didn't really we had such problems with his vision from the start. And it continuously shows that it has problems. We're gonna get hated. <laughs> oh, we're gonna be so hated for this. But you know what? We're not here to sugarcoat it. We're not no, gonna yeah. lie about we're it. Not. I'm sorry, this is how we feel. And everybody's entitled to their opinions. And we love to hear more about you guys and how you felt. Have you watched it? Hope you did. And if you did, um tell us about it. Um put, you know, comment and, and, and subscribe. Uh please hit that little bell down there at the bottom for notifications so we can get more comments and content out there for you guys. My name is Adam. And I'm Aaron. And if you want to hear some more hopeful news, please be sure to look at the Morgan Project. Yes, um this is a um, organization that I have been have the pleasure to actually work with. Uh, we basically works with um, government and Congress and Congress to try and alleviate the stress for people all around the world, specifically trying to uh, combat poverty and uh, within um, struggling nations. If you guys would like to hear more about it, please uh, check out the Borgen Project, um, um, BorgenProject.org. That's B O R G N project.org. Yeah, after watching this nihilistic movie, we just need some hope. <laughs> yeah, we desperately need it. <hope. laughs> but yeah, so that was our review for Zack Snyder's Just League. Thank right. you guys.